to see so many salespeople that are still doing such a piss poor job of getting customers inside just blew me away. What's up? Checking in out here, training week, back out in Montgomery, Alabama. Love coming out here to Montgomery, man. It's that Southern hospitality thing. You know, I live in Florida, but out in Alabama, they really do bring that, uh, that, uh, that Southern hospitality. But one thing I really want to touch on real fast that I noticed, I've been up and down the block this, uh, this morning, you know, and I go and speak to other stores and, you know, let them know I'm in the area, whatnot. And, you know, ultimately see if there's any way that I can help them too, especially while I'm in town, we can set something up. One thing that I've noticed, and if you're in management and leadership at your dealership, I highly recommend you do this. When was the last time that you've actually had somebody drive into your store and do a secret shopper at your store? Because I tell you right now, you'd be blown back by the amount of stores I walk into and I'm meeting with the general manager, general sales manager, and they'll say, oh, the team does great. Our, fee, our folks know the process. They're in front of folks. And little do they know, I've just watched seven people drive onto the lot, get out of their cars, and nobody greet them. I've seen it where there's a team of people looking at a customer through the window, get out the car. Nobody goes out there to approach them. Person driving through the lot, looking at stuff, going slow. Nobody approaches the vehicle. Do you know why? I tell you why. I actually asked three people today. Even though I knew the answer, I like to get feedback. It was fear. And fear stands for false evidence appearing real, right? But what is it that they're afraid of? That fear of rejection. And here's why. You'd be amazed when you see how many folks still approach the customer and say, hey, can I help you? Now, we just asked them a closed-in question, and we gave them the option to decide if they want this salesperson following them around and hounding them while they're there. When they feel like they have the option, obviously they're going to say no. Is it because they really don't want help? No. It's because they feel like any help that they receive, they'll be obligated to buy something. It's that reciprocation. Okay. So they'll turn it down or they'll feel like they don't want to be pressured. But the reason why they answered that way is because they were given the option by being asked, can I help you? Or starting out the conversation with, how are you doing? That is completely irrelevant to everything going on, how they're doing. The objective is to find out what you can help them with why they're, while they're there. Now, of course, through the conversation, you may be able to identify or find out, you know, how their day is going and whatnot. But to start off a conversation with somebody with, how are you doing? You don't know this person. You have no idea how their morning was, how their afternoon's been going, how their previous day or how that evening is. And in sales, the, the objective is to keep your prospect as positive as possible as you progress them down the process pathway. So when you ask, how are you doing? For somebody to actually answer you, they have to take a mental trip through what happened that morning, that previous night, or that day. And seeing as we have no idea whether that's negative or positive, maybe they got a bad phone call from their significant other. Maybe their child got in trouble in school. Maybe they had a rough day yesterday, but the fact we say, how you doing? We force them to go back through that if they actually answer us. So what we say matters. What we do when we approach a customer matters. If your salespeople are going out saying, oh, look at that customer. Boy, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to close me a deal. They won't close a door because the intention is wrong. When you're going out to approach a customer, the only thing you're selling is yourself. You're introducing yourself, giving them your name and getting theirs. Then the next step is to identify, are they here for an appointment or is it their first time? And then identify which one of the vehicles would they like some information on. And then let's get them inside and let's sit them down. But to go out and greet somebody and say, can I help you? And then start bouncing them around car to car. You don't know what they do for a living. You don't know if they can afford what it is you're showing them. You don't even know if that's what they came in for. But seeing as we said, can I help you? And they said, uh, uh, yes, we're going we gonna to speed up the process because we feel that they wanted to go faster. No, the sales rep is so uncomfortable that they wanted to be over as quick as possible. And little do they realize that the faster you try to go, the more speedy you try to make it, the more you lose because it's about building value. And we have no idea how long it may take for this guest to realize we're on their side. We, we have no idea how long it will take for this guest to realize their best interest will be buying with us. We can't dictate that. It might take some people 20 minutes, might take others an hour, it might take some two or three hours. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. So speed should never be uh, one of the things that's your mission. When a person is ready to go, how will you know? Because they'll be gone already. But if they're sitting there with you and there's no chain on their feet, you don't have them handcuffed to the desk, there's no weapons out holding them hostage, and they're there, they're there by choice. But when we speed up, we actually potentially can speed them out. So uh, I got off topic a little bit, but make sure that you are having people Roll up to your store. See how they're being approached. See what they're being said. Most times what stores find out 
especially when we begin talking and I begin sharing certain data with them about the secret shoppers we've done at their store, about the things that we've observed. We're able to give them names about who the specific reps were. It blows them away because then they find out that the biggest issue wasn't getting people inside. It's how many people could they have gotten inside if they had the right process and the right approach? How many people do they never even know was on the lot because somebody met them out there on the lot, blew them out, and then they left? So a lot of these people are terrified. So if we feel that just because this person is in their 30s or in their 40s or in their 50s, or if they have previous sales experience that we don't need to go over things like the greeting with them, how we approach, the questions we ask and about getting them inside, sadly mistaken. Everybody wants to talk about negotiating the numbers and, and all of this stuff. But if you don't greet the right way, you're never going to get them inside. If you don't get them inside, how are you going to find out what they're looking for? If you don't know what they're looking for, there's no demo, there's no demo drive, there's no deal. And so to me, the greeting is the most important part of it because we only get one chance to make a first impression. And how well or how poorly we do that determines and dictates, you know, how this situation could potentially go. So, again, checking in out here for the week. Have some awesome people rocking with me, helping me out. It's been doing doing great. My girl Heather over there. Heather helped out, helping out greatly. Heather, right? He helping out a great deal. Oh, I'm just shooting for my... For my folks to go on the internet, you know what I mean? Doing, doing my thing out here at Toyota of Montgomery. But, hey, keep the main thing the main thing. And if you are looking for salespeople at your store and you're out here in Alabama, shoot me a message. Let's see if we can set up because I've had a tremendous response um, out here this week. We got some awesome people that are in here rocking and rolling. And if you're not in Alabama, but you're looking to set something up, your sales team is struggling, you want them to get their skills improved. You're looking for some good, solid people to help take your team to another level going into 2024. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Shoot me a message. Let's have a conversation. You know, I can't hurt you. I can only help you. So other than that, I'm Brian Maxwell. Appreciate you for watching. Remember to like this video, post a comment, share it. And I look forward to seeing you at the dealership over and out. I'm about to get ready to get up out of here. We done training for the day. And they hooked me up with one of these offices to keep my, my stuff in whenever I come out. So we about to get out of here. But I uh, just wanted to stop in and touch in and, and really make it a point. Because to see so many salespeople that are still doing such a piss poor job of getting customers inside just blew me away. And I don't want that to be you. So um, other than that, just keep checking in. I'll be posting some other stuff going on this week. Holler at you.